we're going to talk a little bit about choice. Why choice matters. You know, um, tell you, if, if it's okay, I'll tell you a little story. Today, um, I was just at um, St. Mary's Parish uh, in Cochrane, and a parent had come up to me, and they asked my thoughts on a school trustee in Toronto. Um, she was Catholic, and she had a strong uh, faith foundation and f uh, strong faith beliefs. Uh, but when she expressed these beliefs inside uh, the Council of Trustees in Toronto, um, her, she was ridiculed, made fun of. She was silenced. She wasn't allowed to talk. And ultimately, she was sued. So she, she was at harm financially. And she wanted to know my, my thoughts. Um, whoops. She wanted to know my thoughts on this. And what I said to her was, you know, I, I'm a, I always say this, I'm, I'm a systems level thinker. And I see things from the perspective of laws and, you know, what, what works like at the system level. And so I told her that, hmm, that seems like a violation of this person's rights under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. For, you see, for the, like, for example, the freedom of religion and freedom of expression are charter rights at the top of the legal hierarchy in Canada. School boards cannot, through policy or action, limit a person's charter rights. And so it's an understanding of like, that seems really weird because like that seems above and beyond what a, a, a board of trustees is even capable of doing. Um, and so many people have been asking my perspectives on things like uh, masks and they've been asking my perspectives on things like uh, the vaccinations. And I've been saying pretty consistently that my perspectives, because I'm a scientist, align very closely with the scientific consensus. However, if this is something that you do not believe in, I will still fight for your right to choose because, like, not because I agree with it, and, and this is the important thing for any candidate, is because your ability to choose is important for our freedom and for our democracy, right? Like when I don't take away your ability to choose, you no longer have freedom. You no longer have democracy. That's the whole, that defeats the whole purpose. We as Canadians and as Albertans are strong because we have a diversity of opinions the freedom to express those opinions in public debate and the right to choose what is best for our children. And so this is why the freedom of choice is something that is very precious and it can be taken away. There is the risk. There's a lot of people who would like to take away people's freedom of choice. But when you lose that choice, you lose a lot of other things too, mainly your democracy, your freedom. Uh, and so it is for this reason why I'm a, a huge advocate for uh, parents. Oh, somebody, somebody asked me a question. Oh, this is, man, I'm getting so many messages. Like it's, it's, it's just crazy these days. Like you, you, you should see how many, like oh, I want to know your opinion on, on this one and this one and I love it. You know, because I think that it, people want to know that you, you think about these topics in depth. And there was one about, um, I, I, yes, it was about uh, the teaching of, no, was it teaching? No, it was about like transgender equality. And one of the things I said there was the way it currently works in Calgary Catholic is that if you are being taught something in the um, the health curriculum that is related to gender and sexuality, um, generally parents are informed in advance and they have the option. They have the option to decide that, no, I'm, I'm not going to teach these to my children. I'm going to give them the option uh, because I'm going to teach them at home 
for example, or I'm going to teach them uh, something different at home. So this is this is up to them, right? It is it is part of their uh, their choice as a parent. And I think that as a parent, you you know what works best for your own child. You know what how you want to raise them and and what kind of perspectives you want to give them. And I am here as a trustee to fight for that right, to maintain it. And if necessary, use the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms to protect that right. I may not agree with it, but whether I, I agree or not doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, your choice is paramount. If we, you do not have that choice, you do not have freedom, you do not have democracy. So be thankful. Be thankful we live in a place where people can have very different opinions. And they can express those opinions, and they can choose what is best for their children. And as parents, like, I know you always make the, you, you, you based on the best information that you have, that is how you make decisions. Your ability to, to make this choice uh, as a parent is based on the best information and our ability as trustees to make the best decision is based on the most information that's out there. That's why I talk about scientific consensus. It does not work as a scientist for me to just look at one study. That's not how we operate as scientists. We look at multiple repeated studies. We look at meta studies because you can never prove anything with a study. You know, science is all about disproving stuff. And so you look for contrarian angles and you look for like disproofs of it. And when it becomes super hard to find a disproof, you go, mm, we're getting closer to the truth now. Right? In the same way, like we never take a single passage of the Bible and we say like, oh, this is definitely the truth for everyone right now. Just like literally from the words. No, like every single like father is deep in their faith because they understand the context in which it was learned. But that said, you know, people have very strong perspectives and I want to respect them. And I'm here to say like, yeah, if somebody like wants to put, oh, there was another one about a flag. <laughs> oh man, there, there's so many discussions I've had. I'm just like all over the place. I'm sorry. This was a discussion about, we wanted to put um, like a pride flag on, onto, onto school campuses. Somebody wanted to do that. And like I said, I'm a systems level thinker. And the th discussion I had about this was, like I'm not even debating whether or not like it is the, the right thing to, to put something like that on. I was saying like, this is really weird because you're putting like messages onto school property that have not been approved by the board, right? Like this is one person just making a decision. And so we, we would never want that to happen in any of our schools because like you could put out whatever message you want. And I think that that's the key is that if you're going to start allowing messaging, then allow messaging, right? Like any type of messaging. But if you're not going to allow messaging, then don't allow, like, like restrict that completely. And so it becomes unfair when you have one group of individuals that has a message and then another group, like, for some reason, they're not allowed, right? There has to be a very strong reason for doing it. And I'm not saying that you wouldn't, but you would do it at the board level, you do it at the policy level. Uh, and so it's not the right approach to just go up to a school and, and do something like that on the school property. Um, it, it just, you wouldn't do things at that scale. You have to think about the system as a whole. You know, you would be making a statement and great. Is, if that's the statement you want to make, then make the statement. But if it's not the statement that you want, then vote that down and not, don't make it happen. That's why your choice of trustee is so important. They are the ones who are going to be advocating for you. And they are going to be the ones that are trying their best to uphold the, the policies that in ideally work for as many students as possible. And I, I did say, you know, God calls us to, to care, for, to love all people, but also provide a safe space for them. Right? Like they shouldn't feel threatened in any way. And I think that it is when we show this type of care and compassion uh, that we really start to see who we are as Catholics. I, I'm not even arguing just on 
you know, the, the legal principle, I'm, I'm arguing on a moral principle. So, so that's why choice matters. So that's an example of why choice matters. But it, it's something that is, it's a real passion of mine. Now, um, a thing that I will add, though, is that uh, choice sometimes makes more sense when you've got a community of people. Um, like, the reality is we were never meant to, like, work and learn and struggle all alone. Uh, so great things come when the parents are connecting together. And this is why having a bunch of parents who are able to connect, like the, the parent voice, like I said earlier, the school councils, getting them together is so important. It becomes that collective voice. Uh, some of the books, um, for example, from Dr. Debbie Pusher, Portals of Promise, um, and Living as Mapmakers, talk about this, this difference that the parent voice makes. And uh, there's so much literature, like you can write multiple books on, on this. And I'm so thankful to have met uh, Dr. Debbie, because she she really she really is doing a lot of the research in this area, and I keep asking her students, "When are you guys going to become politicians? When are you going to become trustees?" Because uh, they are so well versed on the the benefits, the material benefits of parent involvement. I mean, it's so important that it, it's written into the law uh, here in Alberta. Like the Alberta Education Act requires schools to uh, open up these school councils and make those available. If you're going to run a school better have those parents involved. I think it was a very good policy and I, it, it's proven to be very effective in, in practice as well.